This is going to be Daniel chapter 7. We're going to go verse by verse and look at the scariest dream that anybody's ever had. Any dream you ever thought up in your wildest imagination probably isn't going to compare to what the dream Daniel has in the book of Daniel chapter number 7. So Daniel 7 and verse 1, it says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. So he wrote the dream. He wrote down the dream so that he wouldn't forget it. Many times when God gives you a thought during the day or even at night, you need to write it down so you don't forget it. But notice it says in the first verse that this is taking place in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. And Belshazzar was slain back at the end of Daniel 5. And it said that Darius the Median took the kingdom. So chapter 7 has to be referring to an earlier time. So we're going back in time a little bit. Now Daniel is having dreams. And this is going to be the scariest dream or one of the scariest dreams anybody's ever had. Anything you ever dreamed up in your wildest imagination as a kid couldn't compare to Daniel's dream. So Daniel is going to tell the sum of the matters. He's going to tell us what he saw in his dream. Number one, he saw monster-like creatures. Now, every dream you had as a kid that was scary probably had some monsters in it. And you probably checked for monsters under your bed and in your closet. But Daniel's dream definitely had some monsters in it. If you see in verse 2, it says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So he sees these monsters or these beasts, the monster-looking creatures, and a lot of this is going to be speculation because I have no idea what it's talking about. I mean, I looked at what preachers say, what the commentators say, but I'm not sure if they know what they're talking about either. So this is really just going to be a fun study, just looking at the chapter. But imagine waking up in a cold sweat, being Daniel, after you've seen a lion with eagle's wings. A lion is scary and terrifying enough without it being able to fly, but it's a lion with eagle's wings. But lions are scary. The devil's referred to as a lion in the Bible. Jesus Christ, when he comes back at the second advent, is going to be like a lion. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Satan is like a lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, just standing next to the glass at a zoo next to a lion can be scary. But imagine what Daniel saw, a lion with eagle's wings. Not only this, but it, it's going to stand on its feet as a man. And a man's heart is going to be given to it. So now, is what Daniel is seeing, is that just how he's describing it, or is he just trying to describe something and say it in a way that everybody can understand it? I have no idea because I don't really understand it. But imagine looking up at this monster-like beast in terror in your dream, as Daniel did. And one thing that is probably certain is that the beasts portray kings and kingdoms. We know that much. In Daniel 7:17, 7, the same chapter, if you just read the whole chapter, in verse 17 it says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. So no doubt about it, these kings or these beasts are associated with kings. Now this lion, which is a walking lion, portrays Media Persia, historically, but prophetically, it could be England or Iran. And that's just speculation. Uh, the lion can't be Babylon. We know that because these are future kingdoms from the time that Daniel's talking. And the king of Babylon has already said to be reigning in verse 1. Remember we said in verse 1, the name of the king, and he is the last king of Babylon. At the time that 
Daniel wrote this. So these beasts or kings have to arise after Babylon. And if Babylon matches the head of gold in Daniel chapter 2 verse 38, then you go down from there and you have Media Persia. So that is the lion of Daniel 7 and verse 4. Then the second beast is like a bear in verse 5, and that would be Greece. The leopard in Daniel 7, 6 would be Rome, and then the last beast would be the Antichrist kingdom. So Daniel 7, 5, it says, And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So you have a giant bear coming up out of the sea, and it has ribs in its mouth. And bears were always hungry. And there is some people cheering this bear on to devour much flesh. This is what Daniel's seeing in his dream. So he just saw a lion with eagle's wings, and now he's seeing a bear. And people saying, Arise, devour much flesh. The bear historically would be Greece, but prophetically could be Turkey or Russia. Now Daniel 7, 6, it says, After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also, the beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it. Okay, now you have a leopard with four wings of a fowl. So it has wings like a bird. So a leopard can run after you. And now this one in Daniel's dream can fly after you. And back when I was living in the world, I watched a lot of horror movies. And it seems like they always gave the monster wings. Eventually in the movie, the monster would die and then come back with wings or something. Just like he wasn't scary enough chasing you on foot, they got to give him wings. Not only this, but he has four heads. So imagine seeing this in your dream. Imagine having that feeling when you wake up and saying, Man, I'm glad that was a dream. Because Daniel is having the scariest dream anyone ever had. And this leopard, historically, is pagan Rome. But possibly in the future, could probably be papal Rome. But it's just speculation. I don't know these things for sure. And Daniel 7, 7 says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So this beast looks like it could be a combination of all the beasts put together. And notice it has ten horns matching the ten horns in Revelation 13. Uh, Revelation 13, 1 and 2 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Notice that John is also seeing monsters come up out of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So here you have a leopard, a bear, and a lion all rolled in one with the dragon giving him his power and seat and great authority. So the fourth beast would be the Antichrist. Now Daniel 7, 8, it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. So the Antichrist is the little horn. He has eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things, as the verse said in, in verse 8. And if you look at Revelation 13, the chapter we just looked at, and verse 5, it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. So there you have a good cross-reference matching the mouth speaking great things. And false prophets by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. That's what all the TV evangelists do. They want you to send them money 
so they butter you up and talk nice to you. But through good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Through good words and fair speeches, they also throw in a false gospel. They throw in false doctrine. False people will speak positive and smooth things to tickle the ears of the people. And in the last times, people aren't going to endure sound doctrine, but by their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And the Bible says, it talks about people who will say to the prophets to tell them smooth things. They just want to hear something smooth. They don't want to hear anything about sin. They don't want to hear anything about judgment or hell. They just want to hear something slick and smooth. And the Antichrist is going to be a slick and smooth talker. But what else does Daniel see in his dream? When we get down to verse 9, it looks like he is seeing the great white throne judgment. And something scarier than seeing monsters rise up, rise up out of the sea is standing in front of God at the great white throne judgment. You're going to be standing in front of the Lord Jesus Christ who has eyes like a flame of fire. And Daniel 7, 9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So the Ancient of Days would be none other than God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Before Abraham was... I am. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Paul says about him, in Colossians, he says, Who is the head of all things, and by him all things consist. He is the Ancient of Days. So think about, as far back as you can imagine, anything being in existence, and he is way further out than that. He's always been here and always will be. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. But God's always been here. The Lord Jesus Christ has always been here. He wasn't just born in a manger. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So his hair's like the pure wool. And this matches the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation 1.4. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So there you have another match. Daniel 7.9 I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. And when it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, this could be referring to the second coming, when Jesus Christ comes back to take over. But if so, it skips the millennial reign, and just goes straight into talking about the white throne judgment right after that. Before the great white throne judgment, the Lord is going to burn up the heaven and the earth, and that's why his throne is like the fiery flame and his wheels is burning fire. And Second Peter 3.10 talks about this when it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Daniel 7.10 says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Those ministering to him are believers in the Lord, and the ten thousand times ten thousand are about to be judged at the great white throne judgment. The judgment was set. The books were opened. That's what makes you think it's the great white throne. Now Daniel 7, 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Now here in verse 11, it looks like it's going back 
and jumping back to something that happens before the great white throne judgment, talking about the second advent again, and this is where the horn, the little horn, the Antichrist, will be cast into the lake of fire. It says, I beheld even till the beast was slain, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.8 talks about this beast and says, and then, that sh and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And then Revelation 19, 19 through 20 talks about this event and says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sit on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So it would be hard to come to Daniel 7. It would be hard to, to come to Daniel 7 and get past these end times events. The Bible is full of prophecy. Even in the Old Testament, all through the book of Daniel, people think that the Old Testament is, is just outdated. But it's actually prophecy. It's more future than the newspaper you got. It's more up to date than the newspaper you have. And you can go back and forth through Daniel and the book of Revelation and notice a lot of similarities how it's talking about the same thing. And you know the book of Revelation is referring to end times events. Now Daniel seven twelve it says, And concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So those beasts, which are kingdoms, will have their dominion taken away, but they will go into the millennium, and they will be forced to worship Jesus Christ, or they'll just lick the dust. Now Daniel seven thirteen and 14, it says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to get what is rightfully his, and he is going to be king over the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and everyone will serve and worship him or else. It will be an everlasting dominion that won't pass away or be destroyed. And Isaiah 9, 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Notice it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. When the Lord Jesus Christ is going to set up his kingdom, a thousand year reign Satan's going to be loosed again for a little season he's going to be tossed into the lake of fire and then we're just going to go out into eternity and the increase of his government's not going to have an end and you won't be able to wait four or five years and elect someone again because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be king he's going to have everlasting dominion after four years, you don't get to vote him out. Once he's in, he's there to stay, and he's going to clean house. But imagine having a dictator like Jesus Christ who is righteous and loves his people. You won't have anyone being mistreated. You won't have all of this perverted junk that we have now. Men with men working that which is unseemly, and women burning in their lust one toward another, and pedophiles getting rights over anything. You're not going to have all this sex perversion. You're not going to have uh, legal prostitution. You're not going to have pornography and no more child sex trafficking rings because the Lord's going to be sitting on the throne. He's going to see everything that's going on. He's going to know in the millennial kingdom, he's going to know who's for him and who's against him. And anyone doing something they're not supposed to, he's going to see it and put a stop to it. And Daniel 7.15 says, Daniel was grieved. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my the visions of my head troubled me. So Daniel is troubled by his visions because he is seeing the scariest dream anyone ever had. 
He just saw monster-like beasts come up out of the sea. He just saw a bunch of people terrified standing before God at the great white throne judgment. He has seen the devil incarnate, the Antichrist, and he has seen the flaming fire at the second advent. So this is pretty terrifying stuff. Daniel 7.15 says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Notice the difference between the spirit and the body. It says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body. And the Bible lets us know we are in three parts as a person. And 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it talks about a body, a soul, and a spirit. Uh, but next, we see that the scariest dream anyone ever had involves not only beasts, the great white throne judgment, the second advent, the antichrist, but also the spirit world. What are people afraid of today? S they're afraid of spirits getting them at night. Maybe you've had an experience, something like a sleep paralysis, where some type of thing is standing over your bed, with a black hood on, and you can't move, you're just paralyzed. What they call that is sleep paralysis. And what that is, is that's a devil coming to you and attacking you at night. So the Lord is going to use an angel to give Daniel some information. So he also sends some type of spirits in the dream. And you see people trying to counterfeit this today by talking to angels and unclean spirits. But the Lord doesn't work this way anymore. We have a complete Bible. We have a more sure word of prophecy. So, meaning, what's in the Bible, you could trust it a lot better than any dream or vision. And actually, what we have today in the Bible is more trustworthy than the dreams and visions that Daniel had. Because we know we have it wrote down and we know that everything in it's right. And I wouldn't trust anything an angel told me today. It could be a fallen angel. It could be an unclean spirit. It could be one of Satan's ministers of unrighteousness. But this angel is going to show Daniel the interpretation. So Daniel seven seventeen through 18 says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Okay, so there you have those beasts and their kings. And many times if you're unsure of something in the Bible and you don't know how to interpret it, just keep reading and it will flat out tell you what it's talking about. Similar to how in Revelation chapter 1, it ends up telling you what the seven angels of the churches are the seven, and the seven candlesticks and all that. Now verse 18, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Here you have the Jewish tribulation saints taking the kingdom and they possess it forever and ever. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And they are rewarded for their faithfulness and they will they'll reign. As it says in Revelation 20 and verse 4, it says, I saw thrones and they sit upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So they're going to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ a thousand years. And then after Satan comes, comes out of the bottomless pit, he's loosed a little season. He's going to be destroyed. And then these same saints are just going to live eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. But Daniel also sees the Antichrist, one of the most talked about characters in the entire Bible outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why you have movies today about Satan having a son or a woman having a baby that's part devil. That comes from the Antichrist in the Bible because Hollywood can't get around the Bible. And this is why this is the scariest dream anyone ever had. These movies can't think up something more scarier than what Daniel's telling you and here in Daniel chapter 7. So if you want a thrill, if you want to be scared, just read the Bible. And then you're not sinning this way. Uh, Daniel seven nineteen through 21 says, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. 
exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. So Satan is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, and the fourth beast breaks things in pieces. This is because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He has teeth of iron. So do a study on the word iron in the Bible, and you will find it mostly connected to something negative. But this, uh, this fourth beast, teeth of iron, nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. So he's devouring and killing and stealing and destroying just like the devil. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. So he gives the people what they want. They like a mouth that speaks great things. And that's why they say in Isaiah 30 and verse 10, which say to the seers, See not unto the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, but speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. That's what the Antichrist will be, a deceitful worker. Uh, people don't want the truth. They want you to keep the truth to yourself. They want their ears tickled. As I said, people have itching ears. They want good words and fresh speeches that will deceive their heart and make them think everything's okay. That's why people like country music, even though it's wicked, because it makes them feel like everything's okay. Everything's a walk in the park. Everything is the good country life. It's just worldly, fleshy, and keeps your mind on the world and off of spiritual things. That's what rock music does. Keep your mind on the flesh. Rap music keeps your mind on the flesh. The Antichrist will use music to get worship, just like Nebuchadnezzar did in Daniel chapter 3. It's all a big deception with music. He will use his mouth to deceive people. Uh, he speaks great things, and his look is more stout than his fellows. So he's full of pride and overconfident and overly brave. Like the devil thinks he can take on God. Daniel 8.23 says, In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come up to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. So he will have no fear of God before his eyes. Just like Leviathan in Job 41, he has no fear. Uh, and the Antichrist will promote and exalt himself. Second Thessalonians 2.4 says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now verse 21, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against him. Notice this also, what does he do? He persecutes the saints, stays a thorn in their side. And these would be the tribulation saints. He's going to have them killed. He's going to torment them, try to make them blaspheme he'll chop the saint's head off he'll kill the two witnesses he'll kill anyone who doesn't take the mark of the beast and worship him but this is only to the saints big brother comes back to kill him is jesus christ going to come back to kill the false prophet and all the false prophets minions those men that love to have a villain to worship his little minions they have to have somebody to follow and they choose to follow a wicked man. Daniel 7.22 says, Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So Satan is no longer going to be the God of this world. It will be turned over to the Lord and to his saints. Now Daniel 7.23-25, through 25, let's read these verses. It said, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth. And Revelation 13.3 talks about all the world wandering after the beast. So he deceives almost everybody, and they're sent a strong delusion from God, as Second Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about. 
Now Daniel 7.23 also says, And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So he shall speak great words against the Most High. There will be no shortage of blasphemy in the tribulation. Revelation 17.3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That woman that rides the beast, a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy. The Antichrist will stand in the temple blaspheming God. And he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High, as verse 25 said. Just like Pharaoh, who's a type of the Antichrist, wore out the children of Israel. Just like the devil tries to wear you out on a daily basis in your everyday life. The Antichrist is going to wear out the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Now verse 25, it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So he's going to think to change times and laws. And Revelation 12, 12 reveals that the devil knows that he hath but a short time. So the Antichrist is going to try and extend his reign before Jesus Christ comes back. The time and times and the dividing of time would be a year, two years, and half a year, which would equal three and a half years. So you have a time, that's a year. You have times, that's two years, and the dividing of time, that would be half of a year. So a year, two years, and a half a year, which is going to be three and a half years. So he's going to change laws. And any law in God's favor... He's going to change it. So you think America's bad now? Wait till then. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to see everything become permissible. Child pornography, sex trafficking, pedophilia. It will be a real-life purge, probably. That's what disgusting movies like that are preparing you for. Now, Daniel seven twenty six through 28, it says, But the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So that's exactly right. That's what the Bible teaches. The Antichrist dominion is going to be taken away, as we talked about earlier. He will be cast into the lake of fire at the second advent when Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse to take over with ten thousands of his saints. And the nations will serve and obey the Lord Jesus Christ, or they'll lick the dust. Now verse 28, Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. He is contemplating on his dreams, and what the Lord gave him so much that his countenance has changed. You can see it all over his face. So Daniel just had the scariest dream anyone ever had. And the verse said his cogitations, if that's how you pronounce that, his cog cogitation troubled him. And I looked up the definition for this, and it's the act of thinking, thoughts, meditation, contemplation. And you can see why these things troubled Daniel. We have heard about the white throne judgment. We heard about the tribulation. We heard about the Antichrist. We heard about the beasts. We heard about the spirit world and the devil. And all this stuff that was in Daniel's dream. And Daniel receives these messages from God in a dream. And it hit him like a brick in the face. face and he actually sees it with his own two eyes. So this dream would scare anybody. It would make anybody want a nightlight. It would make anybody want to go get in bed with their parents. 
And that's what's in the Bible. The Bible has some strange, interesting stuff in it. And I hope that this study of Daniel chapter 7 has made you interested in reading the Bible. And I hope that you will do further study into this. Maybe find out some things that I didn't show you because I don't know much about this chapter. And I don't know anybody that really knows all that much about the chapter. I mean, we got what the commentators say, but do the commentators really know all that much? Uh, Daniel will probably be revealed more to a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble. And he'll unseal some of the things in it. The Lord will unseal some of the things and give somebody some revelation and light on Daniel chapter 7. But for now, this was just my sorry attempt to teach Daniel 7 or at least talk about it and maybe provoke your interest. So this has been Daniel chapter 7 verse by verse about the scariest dream anyone ever had.